back guys. It's time for the uh, final video in our How to Paint Your Guitar with Spray Can series. So, in the last video, which you should check out if you haven't seen it yet, we did the clear coating. So there's our guitar with the clear coat. As of the very beginning of this series, I decided that I was going to leave the green lines from the wood in there, which is why I didn't grain fill. So I'm still happy with that choice. I think it kind of adds to the effect a little bit. Looks pretty cool, especially in these areas where it's more interesting. And that also goes for the back of the guitar. Now, the last step in a paint job like this to get a gloss finish is to polish. Now, if your guitar looks like this when you're done your spray can job, um, <clears throat> it's pretty glossy. And if you're happy with that, you may be best off just to leave it as it is. But if it doesn't look like that, that's fine too. That's why we have the polishing process. So polishing is e uh, simple, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. Sometimes things go wrong, sometimes you leave swirl marks, sometimes you leave it worse off than when you started, um, as particularly if you don't have the equipment. Today we're gonna do it without the equipment, that I would typically use because I know those of you using spray cans probably don't have it. But anyway, the, the point being, if you're happy with it before polish, you don't necessarily need to polish it. It's, it's not gonna make it more durable or anything. It's just to give you that mirror finish. So the idea behind polishing, as I said, is very simple. What we're gonna do is sand it flat. Then we're gonna get that as smooth as possible by sanding to the highest grit that we can. And then we're gonna polish it back. So when you polish, uh, you get your gloss back essentially because we're going to get rid of the gloss when we sand. So this is already pretty flat which means I don't have to start at a very aggressive grit. I'm going to start with 1500. If there was a lot of orange peel or something I might start with 600 and hope that my clear coat was thick enough for that. So bear in mind the, uh, the heavier you're going with your sandpaper the thicker the clear coat needs to be in order to withstand that so you don't sand through. And we're just going to lightly sand the surface of this one. I'm going to do it with 1500 on a block. Make sure you use a sanding block because that's what's going to prevent you from leaving grooves. You want to get it as flat as possible, as I said. So you need to use something flat. I'm going to start with the 1500 and I'm going to work my way up to 5000. Now I'm going to do the 1500 grit until I can't see any low spots, which means everything has to end up being the same matte finish. Which, if you've got a nice, smooth paint job, isn't that difficult. But if you look here now, at the area I just sanded, there are going to be those lower areas where the grain goes in. That I'm happy with. But there are other spots, I don't know if I'll be able to show them to you. Maybe not. Oh yeah, you can see this, it kind of looks like the surface of an orange. It's called orange peel. Honestly, it is, not even because of the color. Um, right in that area. So I'm going to sand until that effect is gone because those low spots that are still shiny are lower and I don't want them to be. I'm going to sand until that's all gone with the 1500 then I'm going to go over it with the 3000 and then the 5000. And that's literally all there is to it for the sanding part. So there's no point in you watching me do that and we'll come back for the polishing. So there we go guys, we've got this sanded smooth to 5000 grit now and you can see that honestly the 5000 grit is so smooth that it kind of gives its own shine. So that's not quite gloss anymore, but it, it is basically a semi gloss just by virtue of how smooth that sandpaper actually is. So now it's time to get that gloss back and the way that we do that is by basically burning polish right into the, uh, the tiny, tiny micro scratches that are left by the paper. So the polish that I'm going to use, you can use any polish pretty much. You can go to Canadian Tire and get some Meguiar's or Scratch X or Mother's Polish, whatever. I don't care. It's all the same stuff, pretty much. I'm going to use Norton's Liquid Ice because it's what I happen to have with me at the moment and because some polishes have more than one step. Uh, for example, 3M has their compound and then their fine machine polish and then I think their perfected polish or something like that. This one there's only one of. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use it on just a lint-free cloth. Don't use microfiber. It tends to leave scratches, even though the entire purpose of it is to not leave scratches. I don't think you should use it. Uh, you can use a foam pad. A foam polishing pad on a polisher would be ideal. But, like I said, I, I'm assuming a lot of you don't have polishers. So what I'm going to do is take some on a cloth. And spread it around the area that I want to polish. Just in a thin layer. So I've just got some over here now. And then I'm going to rub it in there as hard as I can. With a polisher, you don't necessarily need to push hard. You give it medium pressure because you're spinning and you're going to burn it in that way. But by hand, I can't move as quickly as the polisher, so I need to press. I didn't do a great job, <laughs> I don't think, but I'm just going to take a clean part of the cloth, wipe away the excess, and we'll see what we ended up with here. Here. Alright, so let's start uh, here. That's just the sanding done. And then down here, we've got the area that was done with the polish. Got a little bit of cloudiness left to it because I didn't clean it very well, but you can see that's got a pretty good gloss on it now. I went ahead and did the rest of this off camera uh, so you guys wouldn't have to watch me struggle. And there's what we're left with. A pretty good gloss on there. Could have been a little bit better. Um, well. I shouldn't say better. Could have been a little bit more uniform if I hadn't opted to keep those lines in there. And yeah, it could have been a little bit better if I'd used the proper equipment, or at least it could have gone faster. I got a little bit impatient with it. But that's how you go about getting a nice mirror gloss. So if you have any questions, as always, let me know. I hope you guys found this helpful, and uh, yeah, good luck if you decide to paint your guitar with spray cans. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also, a big shout out to Sovereign King, who does the vast majority of the music for my channel, way better on guitar than I am, and to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech, and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time. Thank you.